In terms of the cessation of hostilities agreement, first of all, it was much broader and deeper than your usual cessation of hostilities agreement or truce. It was actually called a permanent cessation of hostilities. Um, and this really reflected that, I think, because of the Tigrayan leadership's desperation for some form of respite, you know, for the fighting to stop and to try a, a path of negotiations instead, um, there were a number of political concessions that they made um, in order to get the federal government to agree to any form of cessation of hostilities. The, the point is that the alternative for the federal government and its Eritrean government allies was that as they were militarily ascendant, they could have pushed on, it may have taken some time and been very costly, but they could have pushed on, tried to take control of the regional capital and force the Tigray leadership, the, the, the TPLF, the ruling party, to flee the capital and to engage in some form of insurgency. Despite the fact that the federal government had this military advantage, they agreed to a truce, but it seems like they only agreed to a truce because the Tigray leadership made these very significant political concessions. Now, what we mean by those concessions is that if we go back to the beginning of the war or pre-war, Tigray region ran a regional election in defiance of federal authority. That led to a situation where the newly elected Tigray region leadership, in their own eyes, the TPLF, the ruling party, they said the federal government was illegitimate because it had overstayed its constitutional term limits and not run an election due to the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. The federal government said the Tigray region and the TPLF, the ruling party, was not a legitimate regional government because they'd run an election illegally in defiance of federal authority without the constitutional federal oversight by the electoral board. In this agreement in Pretoria, the TPLF, the Tigray leadership, said, we will form an inclusive regional administration as part of this deal, and we agree to run new regional elections. That was therefore a almost explicit acknowledgement that the regional election that was part of the constitutional disputes that led to this civil war within the Ethiopian Federation, that they were on the wrong side of that constitutional argument. So that's just a huge political concession to make. Um, along with that were sort of other elements you might find which, which are less surprising, you're given that that sort of acknowledgement has been made. So the restoration of federal authority um, in, in Tigray, meaning the, the presence of federal military and institutions in, in Mekele and throughout Tigray, as happened before, um, the presence of the federal military on the international borders. So you know, the restoration of the sort of business as usual within the Federation in terms of the restoration of federal authority in, in Tigray. That was also part of the package. Um, and then I think the other side of it is that we know in advance um, of this latest round of conflict and sort of throughout the, the war there have been certain Tigrayan demands. So the return of Western Tigray to Tigray's administration, the meaning the exit of all Amhara forces and administrators, um, and also the the departure of Eritrean troops from Tigray, and they also have held a position in Western Tigray. These things were not explicitly mentioned in the Pretoria Agreement. There was only um, the weak, uh, vague, sort of coded references to them. So we can see again that it was a, a, you know, a, an agreement that favoured um, the federal government in that respect. And the other massive element was the disarmament section of the agreement. That talked about the total disarmament um, of the Tigray forces, you know, perhaps a force of something like 200,000 combatants within 30 days. Um, it talked about them handing over their uh, heavy weapons um, just within an, e an even shorter period of time. So again, this was essentially you know, something which looked more like a negotiated surrender than a sort of balanced agreement between two sides who had decided to um, you know, try and pursue negotiations.